Hey, Wayne Fox, and I'm back with part two of my keyword video about how to get your keyword list organized. This part is uh, pretty useful, I think, because I found a few t tips and tricks that made it go much faster than I thought it would. I was able to get mine organized within a few hours. And I'm a little surprised at how helpful it is to have it organized, especially when I'm out in the field and need to add a new keyword. Uh, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, make sure you do that down there below in the corner. I don't know which one it's in, but and uh, ring the bell. I've got another video I'm working on, which I'm kind of excited about. It's my five top, I guess you call them tips and tricks on Lightroom, the things I use just all the time that make uh, Lightroom work faster and give me better results. And I should have that out in a, a week or two, so make sure you ring the bell so you'll get notified when that's out. Anyway, let's get into this video here and show how I got this keyword mess of mine organized. So it was, it's actually works pretty good. Okay, in the last video, we talked about some of the attributes of keywords and how they're used in Lightroom and how we can maybe take advantage of those attributes to organize them. To start this video, I want to talk a little bit about why you might want to do that. Obviously, it's a fairly time-consuming process if your keyword list is pretty unorganized. One of the nice things about Lightroom is the way that the side panels work and the sections can collapse, especially in solo mode. So you don't ever have this really long list of things to scroll through, except till you get to your keyword list. And if you haven't organized it, it is. Now, in this case, if you see this, if I want my keyword list, I just have this nice little short keyword list, and then I can start drilling things down. And I can, you know, if I'm looking for a location or if I'm looking for specific things, and I'm a long way from finished with this process. But one of the reasons you might want to do it is not necessarily to look them up, which is actually pretty easy, but it's to make it easier to enter them and make sure you get everything. So for example, this is Mesa Arch in Canyonlands National Park. Let's say I just went to shoot Mesa Arch and I'm importing the pictures that I took at Mesa Arch. So if I just start typing a keyword, as soon as I see the keyword I'm after, I just have to hit the return key and it will enter it. So the only keyword I put in here is Mesa Arch. When I export this, I'm going to get all of this location information. Because what I've done is I've just nested all the things. So I go Utah, this is in Eastern Utah, this is in Moab, it's in Canyonlands National Park. And you'll notice on the left that Mesa Arch has a check mark. That means the keyword exists. Any key, anyone that has a check mark, that means the keyword is actually in your keyword list. For example, if I would turn this to a check mark, that would add that word specifically to the keyword list. Now I don't need to do that. So theoretically, as far as the location is concerned, only one check mark will exist in this whole hierarchy. There's no reason to clutter this list up with all of these. As you can see, I've made some pretty decent progress on mine. Anything that's in places or things now, I'm done with. I've found it. You'll notice there are no numbers next to these states, and we'll show why that's a problem in a minute. And I can drill down to all these places. Now, the problem is I still have all of these things down here so if I go down here, you'll probably see that I still have a lot of locations. I've got Grand Teton, Grand Staircase Escalante, so Hanalei, Hanalei Pier. I've just got all these locations that need to be isolated. So the process basically is going to be pretty simple. We're going to go to each one of these and we're going to decide what the keyword is. So this is Cypress Trees. This is a nice example of misspelling. To edit a keyword tag, you just right click on it, hit Edit Keyword Tag. And these are cypress trees, not cyrus trees. Save. Now you'll notice if I go up to things, I have a place to put trees. Well, let's scroll down and make sure that a landscape. Oh, so they do have Italy. So they'll get resolved eventually into the location as soon as I get Italy into my places. So that means I can drag the cypress trees and drop it into tree. So let me switch over to the other database, which is before I started the process. And let me show you about five different things that I found make it easier. You can see these organizational things I've got, work one, work two, and give you ideas on what you might need to do to organize it. I think it's worth the time because once you do it, it'll be very easy to keep it organized. Because whenever you start typing a keyword in, if it's already in there, then you just have to finish typing it. The cool part is if I type a new keyword in, so let's say, let's just type some stupid keyword in like, you know, a Denver Broncos. If I add that keyword to this photograph, you'll notice it shows up here on this top level. So all I've got to do is as keywords show up here, 
I've just got to, at some point, I get four, five, six, drop them into my hierarchy. I don't even have to worry about doing it every time I do it. So one nice thing about keeping everything nested and hidden is it's real easy to do. Now, I, let's get rid of Denver Broncos. I turn the checkbox off. I right-click, and I delete it. Okay, so this is my keyword list before I started my organizational process. And as you can see, I have a lot of problems. It's really long. Just to show you some of the problems I run into, here's a real good example. You'll see that I have the United States here, and I've got a Utah inside of it. Now you see I've got a USA, and I've also got a Utah inside of that. And I've got a Utah here. So I've got three Utahs. And this is true with everything. There's a Colorado here. Well, there's another Colorado up above. There's Hawaii here. I mean, so basically it's a big mess. I've already shown how we can use the check boxes, turn things in off. So first of all, let's talk about getting rid of keywords with zeros. Uh, you'll see I have a lot of keywords that have no associated photographs because I've um, removed the photographs from this library. And of course we can right click on any keyword and we can delete it. But one thing to know is that up under metadata is a shortcut that we can purge all unused keywords and just basically any keyword in your library that has no associated photographs is immediately deleted. Now, it's not a big deal because if you found out you deleted one that you later want to use, you just add it in again. So that's the first thing we do. Now, to organize this and to make this more manageable, what I decided to do is create some temporary keywords. And of course, my end goal is to have all of these nested inside of just a few keywords anyway. So we're going to start off by adding a couple of keywords. First, we're going to add one called places. There we go. And we're going to turn all this off. We don't want to include it on an export. And make sure it's it's not added to selected photographs. And make sure that it's uh, not inside another level here. So it's created. Now, the reason I have a dot in front of it is that forces it to stay at the top. Now, I'm going to add four or five other keywords. But rather than have you watch me do that, let's pause. And I'll be right back when they're all in. Okay, so now I've got basically six keywords here. All starting with a dot. So they all stay at the top. And the three here, internal places and things, are all the ones, when I'm done, those are the only three that'll show up here. Work one, work two, and ZTemp holding are ones we're going to use in the process of organizing the keywords. And then once we get it all organized, we're gonna be able to delete those. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get everything inside of ZTemp holding so that I have nothing on the top level. And that's the reason I put a Z in front of it to make sure it's at the bottom here so it's easier to drag and drop into. One problem I had, so I'll just show you real quick. If I select all of them, theoretically, I should be able to just drop them in. And you'll see that I get an error. What I did to get around that is I just started dropping in a bunch at one time. Now, if I let go and it goes in, you'll see that the arrow stays down and they're showing the list and then you can collapse it. So as long as it drops down and they, they go there, you're okay. And I don't know if there's a limit. It's kind of weird because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I do know that there is, I will run into a problem up here in just a second. And maybe that's my problem. Okay, so right here it's telling me that one of these isn't going to work. I already know which one it is, so let's just select from Lighthouse up. And they should go in. And now if I try to put limited edition in, it won't go in. So if you're trying to do this and you run into this problem, that means that limited edition already exists inside of this. That's the problem here. So if I scroll up, so you can see I have limited edition, but I also have limited edition here inside the list. Well, we can resolve that real easy. We're just going to show all these limited edition. Click the arrow. We're going to select all. We're going to turn this limited edition on. You'll see that it's got a, a dash here. That means some of these photographs have this limited edition and this limited edition in it. We're just gonna turn it on so they all have this one. And then we're gonna turn this one off. Now we're gonna delete it. Okay, so now we should be able to go back to dropping them in. You notice I'm down here to United States and it looks like in the past I've tried to organize this a little bit because I've got quite a bit of location information correctly nested. Problem is that every one of these locations exists outside of this United States as well. So one of my first tasks is going to be to clean this up and then try to get everything that's outside of that. So says here's Utah, you know, back and put them in that. So that'll be our kind of our first step. 
So now we have all these into Z temp holding, and now we've got this nice short list. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the top. Now all of these along here, these are all internal information. I uh, have, when I apply for a copyright, for example, this, there are three photographs. If I click here, these three photographs, this is the copyright registration number for those three photographs. And I've also got several, these are all down here, are all current applications that are pending with the copyright office. If you haven't watched my copyright videos, I would encourage you to look at those because registering copyrights is really an important thing and it's going to become more important in the future. Anyway, those are all uh, internal. And so we're just going to drag them up into internal. Now we can basically we can just start at the top and we can start doing that. But the problem is we're going to get to ones like this Antelope Canyon. That's location. And I don't want to, what I need to do is kind of from locations, I need to work top down rather than just one at a time. So what I'm going to do in my case, and it depends on how you've done your keyword list, but as I mentioned, this United States here is something I've already worked on. So I'm going to actually drag this up and drop it into work one and isolate it. And we're going to drop it into work one. And now we can close this one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to clean all of this up. Once I get it cleaned up, I'm going to drop it into places. Well, my problem is, is that on any given state, there should be no number over here. So you see Washington, there's no number. And if I open Washington, you see there's 211 pictures. They're all associated with the Palouse. If I click the arrow, it shows me those 211. If I click on an individual picture, you'll see that Palouse has a check mark, but none of the others are check marked. And as we showed you earlier, Palouse is entered as a keyword, but nothing else. But when I export, it will export all the relate all the other information about that location because of the way it's nested. But one problem is I have 82 photographs that have United States listed as a keyword in their keyword list, and none of those need to have it actually entered in their keyword list because it's going to be exported when we get our hierarchy right. So to isolate these 82 photographs. Uh, the easiest way I found to do that would be to take all of the other states here and move them into the same level. So now United States has nothing under it because let's undo that real quick. What happens if I click this arrow here is I get everything in the hierarchy. So not only do I get these 82, but I get these 92 and these 298 and these 102. Now some of them are, some of them have both keywords in them. Well, I just need to find these 82 because I just want a more specific location. So you just take these here and we move them out of the hierarchy. And now when I click this 82, these are the 82 photographs that have United States in there. And they might have another keyword and they might have a correct location. For example, this first one, it does have Hawaii and it does have Kauai and it's got a bunch of keywords. So it actually doesn't need... But if I go up above, you'll see that United States is probably entered in there all by itself. Well, I don't need to type United States in there because it's going to get exported automatically. And you can even see that Hawaii is in there twice, which of course it doesn't need to be. Now, Lightroom is smart enough that it will only export it once. It won't export it because it's in the hierarchy and because it's checked. So anyway, what I'm going to do is fix all these very quickly and the easiest way to do that is just to get rid of, first of all, this one and this one. I don't need United States. I don't need Utah. Checked on those two. This one, I can just say where it's at. It's in Utah, Salt Lake. And this is the Salt Lake Temple. Now you see that that's checked, right? Now one thing is, I don't need all of these others checked. I can take those out. And if we see my keyword list at the top, let's go to enter keywords. As I take those out, Utah, United States. So that's going to simplify all this. And because I turn the United States off, it disappears out of the list. These are all Hanalei Pier and Hanalei. So let's quickly fix those. Scroll down to find them all. Let's make sure that Hanalei Pier is checked for all of those. So you can see that I don't have it checked for all of them. So let's make sure it is checked for all of them. But now I don't need Kauai. 
I don't need Hawaii because they those words will get exported. That's what the line means. And I don't need United States. These are all cards which don't need keywords at all. So we can just hide, select those and um, go ahead and get rid of that. This one is in Hanalei. Uh, it's already got all that stuff. It's actually not in Hanalei Pier and it's not in Hanalei Bay. We don't need Kauai and we don't need Hawaii and we don't need the United States. Now, when I click United States, it's going to disappear. But once we put it back in the hierarchy, it will then get United States. This is Lower Antelope Canyon in Page, Arizona. And go to Page and Antelope Canyon. This is Upper Antelope Canyon, sorry. So let's turn it on. And now we're not going to need United States checked because it will show up once we put the hierarchy back together. These two are, uh, this is Valley of the Gods in Monument Valley, or near Monument Valley. And I don't have a Valley of the Gods keyword in here. And so I'm just going to make sure that these are both checked into Southwest, and then we'll fix Southwest at some point. And they are, so I don't need United States. And last one, we have another one of the Salt Lake Temple. And we need to turn that keyword on, but I don't need Utah. And I don't need uh, United States. Okay, so now if we look, United States has no photographs that have just United States that doesn't have a better description. I suppose there might be some photograph that would be United States all by itself, but I can't think of one. So now that I've got United States resolved, I'm going to move it into places. As I fix them, I'm going to drop it into places. So now we're going to fix each state. Well, let's see. Idaho is fine. There are no pictures here. So we can go ahead and drop Idaho up in the United States. Washington is fine. There's none there. We can go ahead and move it up into the United States. Let's take a look at California. So how do we do it with California? Well, that's the reason for work too. Same thing. I want to take these that are in California out, but I want to make sure I can get back to them easy so they're easy to put back in California. Now I can show the one photograph in California that has California in as a keyword. And you'll look up here, you'll see that California is entered as a word individually, but so is the Brisky Point. And if I go down, you'll see that if I go to California down here, you'll see that under Death Valley has a, has a little dash. If I drill down, Zabriskie Point has a check mark. So we've already got Zabriskie Point in there. We don't need California as a keyword there. So now California is done. So drop it up here. And at, when we get all done, as I showed in my earlier one, you'll have United States here under places, but none of the states will have any photographs. And then I've got to go down to another level. For example, uh, there might even be levels below that which need to be isolated because, you know, like Canyonlands National Park, there shouldn't be any photographs that have just that every time there are locations within the park and I want to specify that exact location. All right, so once I get that done, then I can go back and I have a couple of options. I can create, take, basically try to find all of the locations in my keyword list and fix those one at a time. So here's an Antelope Canyon. Now notice this Antelope Canyon, when I highlight it, it's got a check mark here. It's got a check mark in Arizona. So it's in this Arizona. And it's, so I've typed in this Arizona. Well, Arizona, we haven't fixed yet, right? So, but it does have a dash in Arizona. And it's got a dash in page. And it's got a dash there. So we have Upper Antelope Canyon, this version, attached to this file. And since that's the only file, we don't need this one. That means it's going to be in there twice. We've, we've entered this keyword and we've typed it in individually. And we've typed in Arizona individually. So we can remove the keyword from that one and then delete the keyword because it's going to be up here. It's, it's already in this one. So we can do that one at a time. For example, now you'll see the Page Antelope Canyon Here's Lower Antelope Canyon. If we do that, we can take these three and we can make sure they're in Lower Antelope Canyon up here. And you'll see they're not. So we can assign them to this Lower Antelope Canyon. Now we can delete them from this Antelope Canyon. 
and we can delete this keyword. And now this has nothing left and this has nothing left. And now I've got this Arizona, I've got one picture here and you'll notice this one is already tagged up at Antelope Canyon. So we can remove this Arizona. Notice up here we've got Arizona typed and it's in Z temp holding as that sign because it's in there twice. So we can go ahead and delete this version of Arizona and delete this keyword. All right, so, or the other thing you can do is you can actually take all of your locations, arches, and just start dragging them. Big Cottonwood, that's a canyon nearby. Bridges, Bryce Canyon, Bonsai Rock, Black Canyon of the Gunnison, California. And you can all drag them up into one of your works locations. Oops, we want to put them in work too. You're really not going to do this until you resolve. We sh I should resolve all of these in work one first. Once I do, then I would drag them into work two. What I'm basically saying is once you get work one and work two empty, then you would drag all your locations into work one. Or you might have ones that are fairly complicated and you got to drag them in one at a time like it did the United States. Once you do that, you're just going to go and start dragging these into places. So ancient forest, uh, this is a good example of one that should be a synonym. If I go to United States, let's see if we go up to actually still be in work one, go to South Carolina. You'll notice all these photographs have South Carolina in there. Well, this is actually Givens Ferry. So what I'm going to do is add a keyword. Givens Ferry. I'm going to add as a synonym ancient forest because that's how it's described on the sign. That's what attracted me to go to the location was the term ancient forest. And I'm going to hit create that keyword. So now that's in South Carolina. And now we're going to take all of these photographs and they're all actually the same photograph. Turn Givens Ferry on, turn South Carolina off. And now we can turn ancient forest off because we've included it as the keyword and now we can delete it. So you're just going to go down one at a time and decide if it goes into a place or if it goes into a thing, things you want to start trying to figure out how you can or narrow down. So it's more of a drill down list. And that's why I have like trees, colors, ocean, and then under ocean is beach, black beach waves. So, so when I pop one of these down, the whole idea is that when you pop one of these down, uh, it's not this big, long list. So as you're struggling to do this, one of the things to look for is the existence of a keyword in multiple locations. And one of the things is this little less than sign. So this means that the color yellow is inside of colors. And the reason that colors is showing up there is because the word yellow is existing somewhere else. So you can see that I've got yellow here, right? Well, this because it's showing that it's nested in colors here, that means that this keyword exists somewhere else. And so Lightroom is storing the hierarchy to make sure it knows where it belongs. And if I go down here, you can see that I have another yellow. So one of the things we do in this process of cleaning it up is we find and we, we combine these. So I need to get all of these yellows into the other yellow. And that's actually pretty easy. And we don't need to drag and drop because we can just use check boxes. So one of the key things you'll do in this process is this very thing. You'll go to this yellow here. You'll click the arrow to show all these pictures. Now you'll see that you'll do a select all. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to that other yellow. All right, which was in things. And we're going to turn this yellow on for those. So now it they now they have both if i just click on one of these you'll see that i've got yellow colors and then i've got just yellow in z temp holding well now that i know that they all every these all have the other yellow i can go down to this one and i can turn this yellow off because i don't need two yellows so if i turn it off it's just the one that's highlighted if i select all and turn it off now all of those color all of those photographs have the other version of yellow and this one is now we can just get rid of by right clicking and hitting delete. 
Well, thanks for watching the video. If you made it all the way through the end, if you have any questions about how I was doing it, just leave me a comment down below. If you have any problems you run into, there's a few other things I ran into that are pretty uncommon, but if you uh, have a problem, let me know. It might've been something I stumbled across as well and found an answer to. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you.